Well guys, it's another day here. Uh, oh, it's been chaotic. Pretty much normal this time of the year, but been working progressively, slowly, <laughs> on this new Holland 7.5 liter engine. Finally got it back from the machine shop. Um, and then I started putting everything together. I've been videoing it slowly as I go. Seems like I keep running into troubles. Uh, it's got 40 over pistons in it and I got to the last piston in the box and of course the rings were already on all these pistons and uh, the oil control ring when I pulled it out of the box it fell in two it was broke in the package so then I that was on a Friday afternoon of course so I had to uh, order those and they couldn't order them till Monday morning then they didn't show up till Wednesday morning so I got that piston and rod and the head on it yesterday and I'll show you a complete video, I guess, when I, whenever I get it done. But, you know, I, when, I, when I called this guy, and of course the guy that I dealt with uh, on this engine at New Holland, you call him up to kind of let at least let him kind of hear about what he did wrong, you know, and he's retired now. He's, he's not there now. So now you got to deal with somebody else. And uh, can't even chew his ass uh but no the uh i said you know we're doing an, a basically a complete rebuild outer frame rebuild we need every single gasket you know if you got to sit down i you know he had weeks to do this weeks while it was sitting there in the machine shop he had weeks to get the the every part i mean i didn't get any of the you know the big rubber washer that goes under the injector and then the coppers for the injectors i didn't get any of those uh, didn't get the old rings where the old filter head and all that shit mounts to the side of the block. Uh, I didn't get the old ring that goes in here. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, you know, and, uh, you guys can, you guys can dislike me for all you want, but I get so fucking tired of all these guys having to do their job. So I'm gonna have to sit down and get on CNH's website, just like I do deer, and I'm gonna have to write down every part number. You know, and then call the fuckers and give them the part numbers and do their job for them. You know, that's what just pisses me off. What the fuck are you there for? You know, if I got to do your job for you all the time. It's just, it just, I don't know, just pisses me off. But anyways, you know, maybe I can get it done before they need it again. You know, before second cutting. They're not going to get it for first cutting because there's just been one hang up after another. I got to get all these gaskets. I got to get on on their website sometime today and then get all these part numbers wrote down and call them and just get them all ordered but it is what it is so um anyway on to the 6170r we'll start going ahead it's about five o'clock in the morning we're gonna see well it's 5 30 actually just now getting daylight out there um somebody sent me some of these lights here they're kind of neat they got a a magnetic base like that and they got right here on the clip it's like a money clip you know it's got a magnet on there you can hold it down see it's getting dimmer and it'll get brighter pretty sweet little setup actually we'll go down to the dimmer setting and make the battery last a little longer it's been a while since i've had one of these apart but uh we got to get into the park lock and the diff lock so we'll probably this thing's gonna really be gutted um the park lock control block is right there on the side frame and uh i don't think let's see here let's put this big light let's just turn it off we'll get this little nebo light this guy sent me there wasn't no note or anything on her as to who it was Whoever you are, thank you very much. But uh, there's really no way to go about doing this other than the hard way. You can tilt the cabs on these 6R tractors, but if you don't have the special tooling, which I do not possess, you might as well just get your crane and your spread bar and just rip the cab off and set it on the ground and get it out of the way. And I'm not spending a bunch of money on the special tools to go do that.
Yeah, and there's your park. There's your park block right down in there. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no way to get that off of there without pulling the. Uh... Okay, so we got uh, right rear tire off. Got a couple blocks in between the hinge points there on the front end. The oscillation, uh, as you can see here, the park lock is down in here, uh, in between the frame and the and the uh, track and the transmission there. So the next thing we'll start doing is uh, I need to pull the negative battery cable off, but we got to pull this step off anyway. So might as well just pull this big condom off right here and then uh, pull this step off. And then it's really easy to get to the battery. Okay, so now that we got that big plastic condom off there, it's really easy to get to the battery now. Let's put that over the positive post. That way I don't arc on it when I accidentally touch it with this end wrench and cause troubles. On these 6170Rs, if you're putting a new battery in one of these, this wire right here is of supreme importance. This wire, this little ground wire, grounds like pfft. you'll you'll have all kinds of codes your full drive won't work right your pto won't work right your diff lock won't work right it grounds everything on those controllers that is a very important wire right there trust me ask me how i know i didn't do it but i had a company that they had one of their mechanics had put a battery in it and they never told me this, they just brought the tractor in saying that it had all these issues and it took me a while to figure it out, but I finally got, you know, doing the hydraulic testing and the electrical testing, I finally got down to the wiring schematic that I had a ground problem and it was that wire, when they put the new battery in, they didn't put that wire back on. So, yeah, what a, what a deal. Okay, so we got to get the step off and get it out of the way. And it, uh, let's see, this brace here, pull that bolt. What else do we get to pull? There's two here that hold it to the stack. The stack actually has to come off as well. So, okay, so <clears throat> pop the floor mat out. I'm trying to remember where the clip was. That would be this right here. And then you want to take that off of there. When you pull the cab, this cable is going to go through, so you need to get this clip off too. So slide that off of there. That way, it can go through the floor once. Once she's all loose, I thought, I can't remember if there was, I don't think there's anything else, if I can remember correctly. It should all kind of go through there once you get, yeah, once you get where you need to be, you'll have to push that little grommet through the floor of the cab. But once we start lifting on it, that can be that, so... That's your, the power quads have them too. That's your park release. You can take that, see this eye sticking out of the bottom here. If you need to tow this tractor, you can run, pull that end off of there and then run that rod up through that hole and then tighten that down. And that'll pull that park lock off. Because remember, the park lock's spring loaded. But that cable's going to go through the bottom of the cab once we pull the cab off. All right, so we got this access step off and got the stack off. And it tells you in the book before somebody hollers about it. Oh, I can't believe you're hanging that window washer fluid reservoir off the battery cable. And well, that's what it tells you to. It tells you to do that in the book. It tells you if it's empty, hang it off the hoses. If it's full, support it. It's empty. So, um, 
What did I do with? I need to put this little turn nut. I gotta get this step off over here. And then there's a hose here we gotta pull off. You know when I started doing that, I I went way up on my rates because you know why? I'm just about as much as a dealer is, and I'm gonna start buying newer, nicer stuff and better equipment. Because you know what? Every time I ever tried to go cheaper and try to go easier on these guys, the minute that I couldn't get there when they wanted me to be there, I'd drive by there and the dealer mechanic would be in the field. And I thought, you know what? If they're gonna call the dealer, they were gonna use me anyway, why not just charge the same as those guys are? <laughs> you know? I, that's kind of where I'm at. Hi, Josie. How'd you get so damn good looking? Huh? She's so damn good looking, she don't know what to do about it. You know what? I could have swore I've seen that whole thing move, it did. <laughs> okay. I would say that helps support that tank. I'm just gonna thread these back in here. Less bolts in the big pile, the better off I'll be. Okay, so Josie, I don't know why you don't grab a wrench good looking and start helping out around here. I gave her a bath last night. Where's your dog bed? Let's get your dog bed. I don't want you sitting on this dirty old floor here. Let me go get her dog bed. Okay, so got that step off and they tell you that this this hose it, you got to pull off you see that clamp down in there they say yeah pull that pull that off of there and yeah well you're not going to do that even if I'm sitting there thinking about it maybe maybe when you lift up on the well wait a second i'm trying to think of what part yeah once you lift up on the cab i'd say i want you to lift on it a little bit probably pull that hose off you ain't going to do it right now Okay, so now the book tells you to unhook all the steering lines. Now this has a steering assist valve um, for the auto steer that's incorporated in and kind of teed in down here. So what I like to do on the ones, especially with the steering valves, so I don't have to mess with that, most of that. Even when we pull the IVT out, we might have to pull some of that stuff off, but we'll see when we get there. But uh, I like to, the book tells you to take them off down here. I like to pull them off up here for two reasons. One, for the very reason I stated previously, the steering valve for the auto steer. The second reason is, is that, of course, gravity, you know, you have less oil draining out when you pull it up here on top than you do down here on the bottom. So uh, I just, <laughs> my way of marking them is... I pull the hoses out exactly the way they came out and I tie them up real tight like this. There's two on the bottom, three on the top, and then the, the, the top lines are real easy to figure out. There's three big lines and I tie those all in the order in which they came out and just stack them. So anyways, you can see there's one, two, three, see four, seven, nine lines you got to pull off there and cap. And those are all flat face oil ring plugs and caps. And then this one uh, line here is obviously a, just a hose. It goes, I'm not sure what that's doing, it's some kind of return or something, but it's teed here and goes across the, that little cross member there and goes over there somewhere. Anyway, uh, what I'm gonna do next is they tell you here in this good old book, take this cover off this panel. All it says in the book there is remove harness connector B. Well, um, let's see if I can put this light somewhere. Is that a good enough piece of metal? Oh, yeah. That ought to work, huh? So, there's two harnesses I see that need to be unplugged. So, basically, what you're looking for is anything that's going up into the cab through here. So, un undo this, this one here. Damn, did I grab the wrong screwdriver? flat blade here to get underneath this lock okay 
okay and then there's another one right here that wind plug that's going up that I can see and then you gotta pop this little not sure how that's uh okay it's just got a little tab right there there's a little tab but does the actual I'm trying to think here um, that's got to come loose from that that little that little goody off the top just like so and then you can pop that out of there and that and out of there okay and those two appear to be going up the corner post and you get this little bracket right here so when you start pulling on that cab that's gonna have to come off see this bloom bracket here because when you start pulling on that that's let's see here does this come with the cab i gotta make sure no see once you start pulling on that that'll stay there this harness connector will come with the cab so you gotta get this off doesn't say that in the book but it's obviously common sense you gotta get that off of there because that's gonna come up with the cab and when you start pulling on it you don't want all that shit coming with it so and then also if you're looking at all this good stuff, I'm trying to think here. Um, this is all going into the bottom of the cab. That's going up into the bottom of the cab. I mean, all this stuff going down into here is going to have to come loose. Either that or you're going to have to take this whole panel or something. I'll have to... I'll read a little bit further on in the book there about that. Uh, I don't remember. It's been a while since I've had a 6R cab off but those are obviously issues that we're gonna have to work around getting that we got to get this off so well let me do a little research here in the book okay so there's quite a bit of stuff going on here uh so obviously i've got some of them hose uh crimping pliers like for heater hoses and i put one on each side one at a time and take the hoses off that way I don't have to dump the water and it saves me time putting water back in and less mess and I cap them and plug them and you really can't go wrong on these because one's got a male nipple one's got a female so uh, the way they stacked them up there and then there's a ground that goes up to the bottom of the cab right up under here you need to take off and then all these connectors that go in the back of this fuse panel they got to come up I got them zip tied up here out of the way and then uh, what else was there AC lines got them off got those plugged and capped those are over here as well so um, everything over here I believe that would prevent us from lifting the cab is off as far as I can tell I think that what we're down to now is we're pulling cab mounts off you had a uh, a couple years ago I had one of these that had a suspended cab cab suspension and you usually on those you pull the these 5 8 bolts off up here well they're not 5 8 but whatever size that is metrics but we got to pull this cab mount here and then this one here on this side and then I uh, wish I had taken uh, what I'm gonna do is I get my spreader bar on top of the cab I gotta pop this cover out and there's one on the other side pull the cab mouse louse there and I'll pull up on it just enough where I can get my good old screwdriver on that hose right there and work it loose and get it out of there okay and then uh, of course you know this Bowden cable here for the park lock release you'll have to be real careful with it as well and work that grommet out the bottom of the cab so you don't tear it up so that's where we're at and what we're doing Okay, so one of these things you got to do on these tractors with auto steers, there's going to be a roof array on top of the cab. Don't want to damage this stuff. One of these GPS auto steer units back when I was installing them, and that's been 15 years ago, 
back then they were about forty thousand dollars a track just for the unit for the monitor the steering valve the roof array the roof array bracket and that's just what it cost to buy the unit then you still had to install it and calibrate it and everything like that and i know the roof array we had a couple of truck drivers that weren't paying attention because when you haul these you pull this roof array off because you don't want a tree branch or something when it's sitting on a low boy hitting it and ripping the damn roof array off of it because that's 12 grand right there it doesn't take long to add up to some big money on one of these so take the cable off there and i gotta see where they got that routed there we don't want to be pulling on that it's going down the corner post of the cab and you should have a hairpin here a pair of pliers with me because I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> Get a kick at that previous, the company I worked for for years. Let's just put it this way. They were always, I was the only mechanic there, right? I was the only mechanic there uh, up here, up north. And this is where all the ground is for the strawberries. You know, back when I was there, they had around 900 acres of plants. And if you're talking about row cropping and strawberry plants, that's huge. Well, long story short, they never could, would treat me right. You know, I did everything for them. I was the only guy. We had 22 to 23 irrigation pickups, constantly working on those. Uh, I, I, was in, I was responsible for probably at least that amount of tractors like this and bigger. We had... Two or three of those 9,000 series. We had 9620T, 9430Ts. We had 8,000 series. We had four or five. We had 11 of those challengers at one time, anything from 35s to 55s, if I remember right. I worked on all those. There was never, hardly ever, a dealer mechanic ever got called out to that ranch. And I never seen anything south on a low boy to get fixed down there. I did it all in house. I built all the pump stations, I did all the panel work everything you know I, I i took a lot of pride in being able to do everything and i mean i worked my ass off and the minute i wanted to be compensated fairly for it they had me on salary uh 40 hours a week i was probably putting in 100 hours a week and getting paid for 40. well long story short they've since i quit and went on my own and they wouldn't treat me right they've been through probably I'm guessing probably maybe eight mechanics over the years since I've been there. Well, they and now they've got a they've probably got half of the acreage that that they had when I was there. They're probably down to half, but they had to have three mechanics that are working full time. And these guys were telling them they were working eight hours a day, five days a week. Well, I guess both they had two left, and they bought them brand new service trucks, and they both quit. And then what I this is the this is the rumor I'm hearing. It may not be true, but the rumor is I heard from one of the guys over here that they offered both them mechanics over a hundred thousand dollars a year to stay there, and plus all the benefits, you know, health insurance, everything, and they both still quit and they left, and now they got no mechanics over there. But they had a guy that was handling it all by himself, and you always even with. When I noticed, when I when I was there, when I noticed those two mechanics that they had there, that was one of them was an ex-dealer mechanic, and the dealer was still over there working on the tractors. So now they're paying these guys a hundred thousand dollars a year. Well, they weren't, I guess. Whatever they were paying them before, but they bought them brand new service trucks. But they still had the dealer over there. They're paying twice. But they had a guy that did everything, and they wouldn't treat him right. You know, it's just whatever. I just. It's another one of those things I think about humanity and, and how fucked up people are. And I just, I fucking hate them. <laughs> I really do. I hate fucking people. Half of these son of a bitches will cut their nose off to spike their face. And they won't call me, you know, no, I'm the last resort because they're, they're not going to have to... They're not going to have to eat any pride, you know. They're not going to have to eat any crow because they had to call Warren to come fix something. That, that is, oh, God damn, you know, can't do that. I don't give a shit. If you want to spend two or $300,000 more a year on 
fixing stuff or even probably more than that. Fuck, I don't care if you want to go broke, have at her. I'll help you do it. That old pride's costing you a lot of money. And the shop foreman down in Redding's a really good friend of mine. He's a just a really good guy. And I noticed he was up here all the time fixing stuff for these guys, you know? And I'm like, well, what the fuck do you got those guys hired on for? You know? Oh, Tony's a good man, but he, he rides for the brand. That's for damn sure. You know, he... He's worked for that company for, jeez, I don't know, probably 40 years now. I think he's been with that outfit. So he, he does, he, he rides for the brand, he sticks by them through thick and thin. Which that's good, you know, that's, there's not very many people like that anymore that are loyal like that. I would have been loyal to that outfit through thick and thin. If it wouldn't have been for this manager up here. This manager up here, like, he was a master politician. Master politician. I'll tell you a story about that guy. I don't give a shit if he word gets back to him or not. If he's got a fucking problem, he can come down here and tell me about it. Um. So you know, we had, you know, most of the. Irrigators are Mexican boys, and I have no problem. I've got a lot of guys that I've known that I've grew up with here that are Mexican uh, guys that are good people, hardworking, honest people. Let's put this somewhere where it's not going to get destroyed. Let me figure out where I'm going to put this thing. Anyhow, um, so we had all these irrigation pickups, right? And, and the Mexican boys were irrigating. And I don't give a shit, you know, what what breed you are, what color your skin is. You know, if you're an idiot, you're an idiot. You know, so these guys were just destroying these vehicles and they just, you could tell, they did not give a shit. And the response I'd get when I would say something to one of them, they'd go, the company got a lot of money and me go. And that would be the response I got from them. And um, so anyway, uh, you know, that's a can bus. Well, wait a second. There's actually a can terminator resistor that's incorporated into this plug. Guys, why do you have that unplugged? Anyway, um, so, uh, one day one of the irrigation pickups came in. It was one of those Forest Service auction pickups that had low miles. And it only been, I mean, that thing couldn't have been, maybe, we, we had it like two weeks and the mirrors are ripped off and the bumpers ripped off of it and the windows broke and who's this guy driving around the chevy pickup he's made it a... two loops around here now anyway um so huh. i come up to the shop and see these guys knew that i'd chew their ass for tearing shit up and so they'd, they'd sneak up there and park it on a sunday you know, they drive it around all week like that, all screwed up and beat to hell and shit falling off of it. And then bring it in on a Sunday when I wasn't there, you know, so they could hide it. You know, that was the kind of chicken shits they were. And um, so I come in on a Monday and th th this will really blow your mind. This will absolutely astound you. So the company has a store, a company store. They bought a, a little store down there. And so they turn around and they sell all these irrigators that are driving their own irrigation pickups. They sell them beer. And then they go out and tear their own vehicles up. Sounds counterproductive, doesn't it? So, um, anyways, I had walked up to this pickup looking at it. And you couldn't even see the wheel wells in the bed of the pickup. Couldn't even see the wheel wells for the Budweiser cans. So the owner, there, the owner, there was two owners. There was a, a, a 
brother and a sister that owned it. And I called the sister, she was supposedly the head haunch. And I just told her, I said, listen, I said, these guys don't have a driver's license. I said, they cross that, we've got fields on the other side of the highway. And I said, they cross that state highway and they run into somebody and them beer cans come out of there. They're gonna own this outfit. They're gonna own this company. And she, oh, okay, I'll get on them. So she calls the manager up here. Well, see, this lady, she's a, she's a white woman, but she's married to a Mexican guy, which I don't give a shit. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, that's your prerogative. That has nothing to do with the decision that I made to call you. So she calls me back in like 10 minutes and just reams my ass and calls me a racist. And she says that the manager, I'm not going to mention his name, he'll know who I'm talking about, but he, he threw the whole race card out there is what he did. He said, well, Warren, he just doesn't like Mexicans. That's how he could get out of the responsibility of being a piss poor fucking manager and threw the race card out at me. That's when, right then, that's when I said, I'm done with this outfit. They can have this shithole. You know, when that little chicken shit fucker did that, I thought, you know what? You want to tear your shit up? Have at it. I don't give two shits, you know. I yeah, it's he he's a he's a great politician, great politician. All right, so we started pulling on it a little bit here, but before I get too carried away, how about this roof array cable should stay with the cab because it should be running back through. It should come down the corner post and back through. These I got unhooked. You gotta watch out for aftermarket stuff. It's not supposed to, it didn't come on the tractor. I started pulling on it a little bit there. We need to get a screwdriver and get that one hose loose. I'm gonna have to get that park lock release cable work down through the hole too. So don't wanna get too carried away on that. But I think I might have it up far enough to where I can get my hand in there now. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. Much better situation. Don't know where to put the camera here. But there really isn't a spot. But as you can see, we're starting to pull up on it now. What about these hoses here I'm looking at? I'm seeing hoses up underneath here. I just want to make sure those go around the front of the cab, which I think they do. I think they go all around the front there. That's the AC going into the evaporator core. We should all be going over there. Okay, now let me, don't work for me to put the camera here. Yeah, for instance, here's another thing. This look like this is feeding the lights or something, or they don't say nothing about this in the directions. So you gotta just make sure, yeah, see this is going up to the trailer plug here, which I don't know why they got that unplugged, but you gotta get that unplugged and I got a hold down bracket or something on it here. What is that? Can't really make out for the grease that's on it. Oh, it's some kind of metal tire or something. What is that? Oh, it's a clip. So I need to get a little bar and pop it off that clip. And then, uh, just kind of doing a walk around to make sure there's nothing that's going to be hanging up. care of that issue <sighs> oh come on okay wires wires and more wires it's one of my customers with their that's the 6190R there. Pulling the old 4790 big baler. 
That's the Patron right there. So, let's just make sure, let's look underneath here, make sure there ain't nothing else that's gonna cause us troubles. Yeah, them heater hoses and AC lines are attached to the bottom of the cab. And then they come around here and it should all be free. So we'll just carefully, carefully go along and make sure there's nothing that we forgot. This should be the, the park lock release cable that we've already pulled through. So here we go. I didn't see anywhere in anywhere in the directions about these going up into the cab here so I gotta I think see how do you get into those you got to pull this yeah you, know, you got to pull this air filter housing off yeah you just pop that little Allen head cover or a little screw out and then There's one of them. One's black and one's gray, so. Is the connector gray too? Okay, so. Gray goes to gray and black goes to black. That should be easy enough, huh? 
Okay, what else did we forget? Or well, not really forget, it didn't really tell us to be honest with you. Let's fire the truck back up and keep lifting on it. this out a little bit more and come over this way a little more and give myself a little more room to work in here okay there it's sitting down all nice and safe got it blocked up on the front okay now we can get down to the bare bones of this old girl ah. gotta pull the stub shaft we'll have to pull this little cross member looking thing that the that the cab sits on pull the park lock cable our park lock our park lock assembly is down in here that's where it's at so that'll be the next go around uh there's a couple things that i'm going to do while i'm here uh tearing into this old girl shouldn't say old girl it's not really that old of a tractor uh, these 6170 yards they've been out quite a while now uh there's a, there is a speed sensor here that I would really highly recommend changing. It's under, where in the hell was it at? There's one under here somewhere. It's a real pain in the ass to get to. And it's just one of those things where change it, you know, while you're there type situation. So you don't have to, half the time you got to lift the cab's parcel way up to get to change them. So that being said, I guess uh got to take a little bit of, of a break from this and go inside and I got to get all these parts ordered for this uh, uh, bell wagon engine that didn't get ordered the first time around. <laughs> 